That night, Susie came into my room, jumped on the bed, and said, I figured out how we're going to be stewards. And she said, we're going to have a song and dance show in our backyard and invite the neighbors, and you're going to sing and dance, and I'm going to sell the tickets. <laughs> I said, hey, even then, I thought, five years old, what am I? So Rosemary Clooney was, who most of you probably don't know, George Clooney's aunt. She was the big star of our time, and I memorized two of her songs, and I thought that night, the famous night came in my debut, I thought I was fabulous. Got up on the stage, sang my heart out, and when I got off, Susie said, Nanny, next time I think uh, I'll sing and dance and you sell the ticket. <laughs> so that's how I became a fundraiser. In any event, little did I realize and know, and we worked through many of these events and we always enjoyed it all of our young life and until Susie went away to college and I went a different direction. And little did we ever realize that when Susie was 33, she'd be diagnosed with breast cancer. It was, they were words you didn't speak allowed in 1978 very often, and particularly not a town like Peoria. Couldn't print the words in the newspaper. They couldn't be on radio. Uh, it was called the big C. People hid in the shadows, and you were ashamed if you were diagnosed with a disease like this, and probably let go from your job if you had one. Also, you were considered mutilated somehow, because the only treatment options available at that time were pretty aggressive surgery. So for a young woman, she was literally scared to death. I was living in Texas at the time and tried to do everything I could to get her to come and get another opinion, but it was so difficult for her. It was culturally unavailable to her for her thinking. Finally, we did get her to a comprehensive cancer center, but it was far too late. And right before she died, and we had been through this journey together, my mother and my sister and I, she looked at me one night and asked me and said, Nanny, you have to promise me that you'll help me end breast cancer. And I promised her I would. And I said, I'll, I'll do it for the rest of my life if I need to, but I promise you I will do it. And that's how the promise was made. And soon, about a year and a half later, I was married then to a very, very supportive man named Norman Brinker. And he made it possible for me um, not to work at my regular job. I was in marketing and retail. But I decided, he, he said, do what, do what you want to do. do. Follow your passion. And so I created the Susan G. Komen Foundation for the Advancement of Breast Cancer Research, Treatment, and Education with 12 very good friends of mine in my living room one night or one afternoon. Unwilling volunteers, I might say. They were better friends than they were volunteers at one time. And uh, we had $200, a shoebox full of names, and a determination to overcome one of the biggest killers of women known to mankind, and some men, but basically it's more of a women's disease. 